are truths about prayer and fasting you should know. Now, these truths are very, very important truths. Last week, Sunday, at the second service, we told us that when you pray, you, op- you pay attention to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you are praying, God can answer your prayers by giving you instruction. That one of the reasons why people think that prayer is not the key is that they just believe that you just pray and God will do everything without you being involved. You know, it doesn't work that way. Now, when you pray, you pay attention to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. There are certain things you need to do along your prayers that will make your prayers to give birth to the miracle of your desire. May such instruction not be hidden from you. So today we are looking at uh, the prayer life of uh, um, Prophet Elijah. There's a question I want to ask, but let's read the scripture first. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to verse 46. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. 1 Kings 18. You know, I was, I was going through the internet this morning. I discovered they defeated one of my favorite boxers again, Anthony Joshua. I had to quickly dash through and see that ah, round five. I wasn't happy. But I give God the praise. Hallelujah. I have to tell you this thing. So that you yourself will calm down. Don't think that everything about life is just spirit, 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 spirit. So pastor, no man will boxing. No man will, no man will kick boxing. Football economy can like to the tension around football. I remember when Nigeria was playing against the, uh, um, I want to remember that country that in the world, that was when I lost my interest for football. It was in the World Cup where we prepared, I think it was, they gave us four, it was 4-1. Uh, uh, if I remember the country, I would let you know. You know, everybody was hopeful that ah, Niger- this World Cup is Nigeria's World Cup. Denmark. I almost lost my life. Let's read. First Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. Can we be on our feet in honor of God's word as we all are going to read together? After the count of three, I'll read verse one, you read verse two. I'll read verse one, you read for two. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. It was, he declared it. You read verse 42, one, two, let's go. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. What was he doing? Putting his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Verse 44. Let's go. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not, that the rain stop thee not. I read 45, you read 46, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with cloud and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. You read 46, 1, 2, 3, and let's go. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, was on, upon Elijah, sorry. And he gathered up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Father, we ask that you speak to us again today in Jesus' name. Let's have our seats. Now, let's look at what we read here. The Bible says he gave a prophecy, told Ahab the king, you better go, there's a sound of abundance of rain. Now, before that time, there was no no rain. And the reason why there was no rain was because Elijah the prophet prophesied that there won't be rain, there won't be rain on this land except by my word and we later discovered that for three years six months there was no drop of rain so there was scarcity famine whatever they planted it didn't grow so there was scarcity of food things were difficult 
until Elijah was led by the Spirit of God to go back and tell Ahab there's going to be rain. Now, and after he said that, the Bible says he went to the top of Camel, that's a mountain, and put his head in between his knees. What was he doing? He was praying. And while he was praying, the Bible says he told the servant, go and check, sign, if there is going to be rain. Go and check for sign. The Bible says the servant went and came back and said to him, Oga, there's no sign in the cloud that there's going to be rain. Now, the Bible says he did this seven times, which means for seven times he had to break his prayer, tell his servants to go and check, and the servant will come back. Now, there's this question. Now, he didn't stop praying until the servant came back with the answer that, sir, there's a great sign that there's going to be rain. Hallelujah. Now, what do we want to treat today? Our focus today from the verse we have read is on why prophet Elijah continued to pray up to seven sessions, even when he didn't get a favorable answer. Why didn't he stop praying until his answer came? Kini di, ti Elijah, ti o dake adua, to adua lo to de you know he kept the man kept going kept coming back to tell him sir there is no sign you know and elijah did not stop praying now why will a christian not stop praying i've heard of people that told me that sir we prayed for this miracle for 10 years i've heard people say things like that some will say, sir, we prayed for this miracle for five years. Now, what kept them hopeful is the question I'm going to answer today. Kilo dati won so iri tinu. To jeki won dake adua. To jeki a a adua won she intest waju. Remember when that angel met uh, um, Zachariah the priest in the temple? You know what he said? He said, your prayers has reached the Lord. Now, uh, your prayers has reached God. Your at uh, so, which means our prayers can reach God. And Zachariah was, was, was doubting at this age. So what can make a Christian to keep praying without losing hope? Now that's what I want us to answer. What can make a Christian to keep praying without losing hope? What is it? So many people have given up in their prayer life. Hello, me take bad drama. If you ask some people, are you still trusting God for that miracle? Some, people, some have lost hope. Some have changed their prayer point. Some have changed their prayer focus. Some are no longer asking again. But look at, at the end, he got his answer. Why did he keep praying? Now, answer number one, which is going to be the major answer we are going to treat. It is the level of understanding of what God can do that makes a believer to consistently refuse to give up in the place of prayer. I come again. It is the level of understanding of what God can do. Now, that makes a believer to be consistent in his prayer life. I come again. It is the level of understanding of what God can do that makes a prayer to be consistent in his prayer life. I wrote here, you won't, you, 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 sorry, you won't persist on a road you are not sure of. You know, that's one thing. If somebody is saying, I am going to Lagos, and he does not know the way to Lagos, you will see that if he drives to a point, he will stop. You know why? He's not sure. He will say, let us see if we get anybody that can. I remember we were going to uh, somewhere in Lagos some time ago. As we got to a point, the person that took me said, Pastor, let's ask people if we have missed it. Now we asked, the person said, go forward, you see it turning by the right. We got to that turning too. We were not sure whether it was the turning. The best, we asked another person. We kept asking because we were not sure. Hello? Now, you will give up too if you are not sure that God can answer you. Now, that's why we need to work on your level of trust. I want to work on it today. We need to work on your level of trust. It is when your level of trust is alive. Listen that you won't need to give up on God, no matter how long it takes. So I, I came, Elijah was so sure God will show up. 
he was so sure God will show up. Now, we didn't know how many hours one of those sessions of prayer took. Oh, I'm here, do you work at it to fix that? Do I want session to my other to my new or yeah, or mother me or yeah, to my logo? We don't know how many hours per session, but we just noticed that he kept telling the boy, Go and check. It was the seventh time. So, how can you develop such level of trust? Before we get to that point, let's confirm what God does when He sees people that trust Him. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Psalm 37 and verse 40. Isaiah 30, 26, 3, Psalm 37, 40. Let's look at what God will do for anyone that trusts him. Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Look at this. Thou will keep him who in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because what? Because he trusts in thee. Trust is different from faith. Faith is an assurance of things hoped for. But you know what trust is? It is. That assurance gone gone in trust. Now, and you don't trust a person you don't know. I can say trust can be defined as you knowing a person enough to the point that you are so sure of what he can do and, and cannot do. Knowing a person well enough that I'm so sure. Now that's what makes trust stronger than faith. God said, if you can trust me, and I will teach you how in Bombay. If you can trust me, I will keep you in perfect peace. Now look at what it's also it's also saying in Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 40. Look at Psalm 37, verse 40. Psalm 37 and verse 40. Not Isaiah, Psalm. 37 verse 40 still looking at what god will do for those that trust him and the lord shall help them and deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them why why because they trust him can you see now which means if god finds in you trust for him he will definitely be provoked to deliver you from the wicked he will definitely be provoked. And what is trust? Trust is assurance on the integrity of the person you trust. It may not be even on the integrity of the person. It may be on the integrity of the thing. Now, in our house at Elebu, uh, we have this, as, as, uh, uh, is this socket way they call it, that we constructed. I remember when we were constructing that socket way, it got to a point I became tired our engineer had to take, take over the expenses. Why? There was we, we used 500 blocks on the ground. We used six pillars and two beams. 500 blocks, six pillars, two beams. When they completed the construction, you know what the engineer said? He said, sir, cars can go on it. Now, look at that level of trust. The same thing was what Elijah exhibited. That he was praying, there was no sign. He was sending somebody to go and check, there was still no sign. The person was coming back to tell him, sir, sir, there is no sign. Yet he didn't stop praying. That's the level that God wants you and I to get to. Now, at that point, nobody can discourage you. I wrote here, your level of understanding in what God can do is what builds on, uh, sorry, it's what builds in you a strong faith in God. Your level of understanding of what God can do is what builds in you strong faith. If I ask you now, sir, ma, can your God do it? Some of you say yes. But when you stand in front of challenge, maybe somebody mock you. Maybe somebody says something to irritate you. You go to the corner and begin to cry. Now, if you go to corner and begin to cry, begin to doubt, it's a clear sign that you are not sure. Now, can you imagine? Somebody looks at you now and stands in front of you and say, Pastor Gola, you are, you are, ah, Pastor Gola, you are a woman. I say you are a woman. I'm so sure. And he got that people. You see this man, he's, this brother, Pastor Gola, he's a woman. And Pastor Gola begins to cry. Why would you that you are that you know him what will you say to him the first question you will ask are you a fool 
Uh, are you a woman? He won't even need to go and remove his trouser to check. Even if it's his biological mom that is saying, and he said, we'll be be a say. <laughs> Now, I want us to understand how we can get to that level of trust in God. Now, let's learn from it. We have a long teaching today. How can we get to that level of trust? Because that level of trust does not come as a gift. It does not come as a gift that you pray for. It doesn't come as a gift. That you say some people have it, some people don't have it. No, it doesn't come as a gift. Now look at the encounter. Now let's go down now. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's take it one after the other. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 7. fast. We have a lot of reading. After 4 Samuel 12, you will go to Exodus 16 when we get when we need it. 4 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 7. Now look at this. Now therefore, stand still that I may reason with you before the Lord of all all sorry before before the, before the Lord of all the righteous act of the Lord which he had which he did to your father and to your fathers. Now we're going to combine it with Exodus 16, 32 to 34. Exodus 16, 32 to 34. Exodus 16. Look at this. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Feel an omer, listen to this, of it. To be kept for your generations that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. 33. Follow this reading. And Moses said unto Aaron, take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generation. Emma, woe oh, for your generation. Verse 34, 34. And the Lord commanded Moses so Aaron laid it as the Lord commanded, so laid it before the Lord, before the testimony to be kept. Now, if you bring these two scriptures together, in 1 Samuel 12 that we read from verse 7, if you read through, there's no time. It was talking about Ebenezer. You never know Ebenezer, my stone of help. At your colony, Ebenezer, eh, oh Ebenezer, eh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, um, my stone of help, only you are my helper. Now, some people don't know the reason why God told them, keep these things for your fathers. Keep them. Keep these stones for your children to see. Some people don't know the reason why God said, you know what, you know what, you know what, keep all, gather this uh, manna bread that you ate, that fell from earth. Gather it for you to see. Now, listen to me. You know why God said you should keep it? Anytime the children wants to are faced by a new challenge, God expects them to remember the testimony of yesterday. How do you build trust in God? You build your trust in God when you refuse to forget the acts of God you enjoyed yesterday. Now, you build your trust in God when you refuse to forget the act of God that you enjoyed yesterday. Now, in that first Samuel chapter 7, now look at from verse 10 to 12. Look at what God said. He gave them instruction in Exodus 16. Keep the bread. So when our children are saying, Alone only you are, they say, See, there was a time in our life. Alone run or do bread, Laton. Alone to do bread, Laton. Ah, 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 Kimi Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, if you forget your, the acts of God in your life, Hear me, there is no how you will not lose your faith in God, your trust in God, when you are faced by any new challenge. And like I always tell you, in life, hear me, there will never be a season where there will not be a challenge. Every single time, listen, God said to them, every single time you see this stone, remember how the Lord helped you, how the Lord helped Israel to cross River Jordan in 1 Samuel chapter 7, 10 to 12. As they were crossing the river Jordan, he said to them, he said, everyone from me, oh yeah, pick stones, pick stones, pick stones from the middle, put it here. So that your children will see it. You know why a lot of you 
your trust in God is shaking is because you forgot how God delivered you yesterday. So when you are faced with a new challenge, God expects us to keep the record of yesterday's testimonies. Show me 1 Samuel chapter 7, 10 to 12. 1 Samuel chapter 7, 10 to 12. 1 Samuel chapter 7. Fast, fast. 10 to 12. And Samuel, sorry, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder I told my wife, on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before the Lord. They were smitten before the Lord. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under that car. Verse 12. The last verse, verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone, look at it again, and set it between Mesfa and Shen, and called the name of this stone, what? He didn't forget Ebenezer, saying, he tattoo as the Lord helped us. But anytime, Tebati Rokuta, Okuta, Mumma, Fio, Kuta, Isibio, anytime, Tebati, Chio, Tabati, Hale, Tebati, Rio, Kuta, Kishikeke, Sio, Kuta, Kishikeke, Materi, Bani, Wajue, Shubonke, Lima, Finotipe, I wrote here, God wants us to keep the record of his glorious act in our life. He does not want us to let go the record of his glorious act. God told them to keep it for generations to see. Remember how Joshua instructed the people to pick 12 stones from the middle of the river. Why? So that they will keep record. Let's look at that one too. In Joshua chapter 4. 4 to 8. There's no time. Let's go on. Now, he, he ordered them, gather these stones. Gather these stones. Keep record of these stones. And Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe. A man. Yes. And Joshua said unto them, pass over before the ark of the Lord, your God into the midst of Jordan and take ye up every man every man of you stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel now they brought 12 that this may be what a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying what mean ye by this that you, may, that you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be a memorial. Now look up. How many of you still have a memorial? Some of you, when you cross your own Jordan, you know what you do? You forgot how God helped you to cross. Why do you need to keep record of, your, of the act of God? Why God wants you to keep record of his glorious act? Number one, it will keep your faith in God's ability alive in the presence of new challenges. It will keep your faith in God's ability alive in the presence of new challenges. Pay attention to my words. In life, you will always have new challenge. And do you know what? You know what will keep your faith alive to face the new challenge? is the act of God of yesterday. If you forget the act of God of yesterday, you won't have new faith to face new challenge. I've just told you how they got Ebenezer. Ebenezer came. That name came because God fought for Israel. Now, the stones that Joshua said, gather those stones. They got that one because they crossed the Red Sea. Inside the Ark of Covenant, God said, put a bowl there. Put manna. So that you will show your children there was a time we had bread. Listen, as long as you live in this life, there will be a new challenge. I'll be telling you something in the second service. That the devil is after your prayer life. What kept Elijah praying and refusing to give up is because he had that understanding. It was clear to him 
that God will, will not fail me. And what made him clear? He had the understanding of the act of God. I wrote here, I come again. You keep record of past uh, acts of God because it will keep your faith alive. It will keep your faith alive. And an example of it too was, was what happened to David in 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 38. There's no time to read. When he was going to meet Goliath, everybody called him. This is not battle of boys. This is battle of men. This man you see has been a champion. You are just a boy. You know what David said? He said, sir. Sir, you don't understand, sir. You don't understand, sir. Sir, I used to watch over my father's flocks. And when the lion came, I killed it. If I even took uh, one of my lambs, I killed the lion and brought the lamp out of his mouth. Ah! He said, when the day I came, I killed it. Who is this man? Which means the faith he needed to, to meet today's challenge, he got it from yesterday's testimony. Your prayer life will die, sir. Your prayer life will die, ma. If you don't keep record of your past testimonies. That's why we used to sing, Betty she Lord George Jossi. Betty she nigba woni. Look at that song very well. Betty she Lord George Jossi and those tear me up. That you believe, pay. Betty she ni insane. I wrote here. If you forget the miraculous act of God you enjoyed yesterday, you will lack the faith needed to conquer today's challenge. Take note of that. If you forget the miracle act of God you enjoyed yesterday, you will lack the faith needed to conquer today's challenge. Yesterday was a lion, but today is Goliath. If you forget the miracle act of God you enjoyed yesterday, you will lack the faith needed to conquer today's challenge. So I put in brackets, you need faith for every battle. Before I married my wife, I needed faith to be able to get married. Because everybody was telling me, sir, sir, marriage is not for boys. You can't get married. You feed the wife. You have responsibilities. But I knew it was my time to get married. Now, I put on the faith. I got married. Then I needed faith to break on fruitfulness. We were not having, we didn't have a child. I needed faith that would carry me through that challenge. Now, and God helped me again. You know, my testimony of how I got married steered me up. We broke that yoke. We broke the yoke too. Then I needed faith again to raise those children. There are times that these children will become so sick. that Listen, you can't live life without faith if you want to be a victor. See right here. So you need faith for every battle. I wrote here again, you can't win any battle in the kingdom without faith. You can't win any battle in the kingdom without faith. And I summarize it by saying, the journey of life is filled with several battles. Uh -uh. That's why you need to be consistent with your faith. And how? Keep record. I will teach you how as I go on. So I believe that was why Elijah still continued to pray in the name of Jesus. I believe you, Lord. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Father, I don't know how they pray in their own day. So Yahweh, Yahweh, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Rain, rain. You know, he was praying. He would sit there the servant, go and check. The servant will come back. You too, you are praying, Abi. You are praying, trusting you, Lord. And you see, look around. There is nothing. The reason why you will not give up is because of your level of trust. We have a slogan in our house. And my wife used to say it. I don't know, do you worry? He has never put us to shame for once. Ah, even if it is one minute to, somehow, somehow, he will send somebody to us. Tell your neighbor, build your faith. 
I didn't hear you. Listen. Any single time you notice fear, worry, doubt, what should you do? <laughs> Go back to your testimony record. Any single time in your life you notice fear. Any single time in your life you notice you are worried. Every single time it's like you are doubting. If I may, I put it like this in my notes. Go back to your Ebenezer. Go back to check those stones. That means go back to your testimony page. Every time you remember what God did yesterday. You see that you get steered up again for today. So I now wrote here. How can I set up a testimony record as a child of God? How? Let's see if I can tell you three. Number one. Create special events to mark the date you saw the glorious act of God in your life. Let me come again. Create special events to mark the date you saw the glorious act of God in your life. Now, let me make you understand better. So, if you don't know the reason why we do breakthrough night. Now, to me, breakthrough night is always a special season. We got married and we're trusting God for fruit of the womb. I know not fruit of the womb. We're trusting God for, we had challenge with our accommodation. I've told you before. The person that was supposed to help me with accommodation disappointed me on my wedding day. I was supposed to move into that house that day. Something happened and he said, told me, forget about it. So we started scouting. Now on this particular day, we've been trusting God, we've been praying. There was this particular accommodation we saw, you know, we've been trusting God that God will give us a place, even when we didn't have cash at hand. I didn't know that as I was trusting God for the place, some people were going behind to speak against me. So the man said, it was later I knew, that he made up his mind that he was going to remove my name from the list of those that he will give his house to. He had three new flats. And he said 21 people had approached him for the three. So which means we were seven people dragging each flat. And people came, went to meet him to talk to me, to tell him about me, that this man, he won't pay you. He's a pastor. He, he, will, oh, he said, they said so many things. So this particular day, I didn't know that he made up his mind overnight. It was a Saturday night. To send for me on Sunday morning. Now, on Saturday night, we had me, I was praying and trusting God for Lord. Tomorrow is Sunday service. I'm getting ready. I'm praying for service. And I had Exodus 3. I went to read Exodus 3. I saw how God instructed Moses to go deliver Israel. I know you have read it before. And Moses was arguing with God. And he said, Son, start praying. That everyone I have touched for you that is arguing with me, overcoming or not, Father, convince them. You know, God had to say to Moses, Put your hand in your pocket. Remember, you, you remember the whole thing now. He brought it out, was leprous, put it back, and things like that. So I came to church that Sunday morning and led that same prayer. And after the service, where I sat, sat a young lady walked in. I've told you the story. Not a member of our church. Told them he wanted to see me. Now, long story short, she came and said, Sir, there was a time you were praying in your vigils, and I had the prayer point. I was trusting God for a miracle. And I prayed that if God should give me the miracle, because your prayer point was in line with my prayer, with my prayer point, that I will come and give you something. Are you the pastor? I said, Yes. She gave me an envelope. And that same day, uh, Dikina Wodu came for his Thanksgiving, wedding Thanksgiving. I think one, one year anniversary or so. And he put on suit. He said, sir, this is the first time I'm putting on suit. Sir, do you like it? I said, it's fine. Can I buy it for you? I said, no problem. He said, or oh, should I give you the money? 
I said that should be better. Now, and how much were they selling suits that time? I'm talking about 15 years ago. He said he bought it for 10,000. So he said somebody should follow him. He gave the person 10,000 and they brought to me. Now, as we were closing the service, I now told my wife, I said, uh, Pastor MC, you know what? Please, as you are going to where we are scotting, branch that Baba's place and tell him not to forget us over the issue of the house. Then I finished counseling and other things, went back to meet my wife where we were scotting. As I got there, I said, sir, I said, uh, 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 I got to the man's place and the man said he wants to see you. I said, eh. Don't forget, 10,000 cash was in my pocket. I, uh, the envelope that was in my pocket, I didn't open it as I did. But as my wife said what she said, I said, somebody even gave me an envelope. Let me even check what is there. I counted it. It was about uh, 20 something thousand. So I just put it back in my pocket. So I went to the Baba. And the Baba said, Pastor, do you want this house? I said, yes, sir. Are you sure you want this house? I said, yes, sir. Can you give me 30,000 now or forget it? Ah, 30,000. Don't forget, 10,000 half a suit, 27,000 some, 27, in the envelope. I said, hold on, sir. I just turned like this. I removed the 10,000 that I already know. Then I counted the other one. I discovered it was 20 something plus. I removed 20. So I just, I didn't go home. I just gave him. The Baba said, wow. He collected it and counted it. He said, 30,000 that you were not even aware of. Ah, these people must be lying. I said, who, sir? He said, Pastor, do you know this person? Do you know so so and so person? I said, I know them in this area, sir. He said, they came to meet me that I should not give you this new flat that you will owe me. So I decided to use this test to remove your name. If you can give me 30,000 without having to go home. You know what Fajr said? I said, Muni, I bet need to see. He said, no, 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 no. It's not that I even need this 30,000. But let me collect it and assure you that you have this house. So we, I left. I got to my, told my wife that we have paid part of our rental. The following day, I passed by again. But I asked the Baba, sir, I don't know whether we are, where we are squatting. Yeah, he said the rent is 60000 per year and he wants to collect two years. He said, but pastor, for you to give me 30000 I had parking. We parked in, sir, on a good Friday. So to me, it was what? Breakthrough. That day, we had vigil. And the thing is breakthrough. I don't use to forget that day. Listen, you don't forget the dates that you encountered God in unusual ways. Create events around it. Am I communicating? Yes, now, these events will keep those acts of God fresh in your mind. Now, what about my, my birthdays? Some of you don't know the reason why at times we announce the birthdays. We like, you know. <laughs> it was on my birthday too that I was praying to become a father. And God said, son, I will give you your first child on your birthday. I didn't believe. I wrote it down. And I was shocked. She was delivered a week to my birthday on my birthday we were doing a meal so every july 15 i remember that god changed my name may god change your name for good i'm showing you how to keep record of the acts of god in your life that will make your faith in god ever fresh in the presence of new challenge so what did i call number one create special events to mark the dates you saw the glorious act of God. Now, do you know that even up till tomorrow, they still celebrate the Passover feast in Israel? What is the Passover feast for? 
The Passover feast is a celebration to celebrate how Israel came out of Egypt on that night. Some of you don't remember anymore that the day the devil almost broke your back, that God showed up. Do you still have that date? Because there will always be what? New challenge. So when that new challenge comes, you look back. Ah. Okay, this is the God that helped me yesterday. He's still, he's still there. That's what I used to tell my children too. Anytime they, are, they ask God, you don't worry. God is not dead. That was why I had to rebuke her in the day she was saying, eh, Baba, Baba, I said, shut up. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear. Praise the Lord. So what's number one again? Create special events. It could be, you, it could be, it could be special Thanksgiving. You, you hear mommy Ali me every Christmas day. She will come. Papa Sheikh Baby testimony me. Ojo Christmas ni mo wo no church yi. Ay son met tani mo de gbewa. De e de sofu mo yipi mette tani jesu magba. Only number one, woman ni number one, depression. Because those days, it was so chronic that you, mommy ali me, she was always thinking of death. If you laugh as she leaves, she believes that you have you are laughing at her. If you if she's laughing and she and you are walking in and you stop laughing, she will believe you have seen something. Number two, she she ha, she had diabetes. Number three, blood pressure was so high. And within one year of consistently hearing the word of God. God changed her, her health status. Then she said, every year, sir, every Christmas day, Christmas day, you know, the mama, she thanksgiving as a testimony. You, where is your own testimony? Number two, you can set up a testimony diary where you de- document the strange act of God in your life. Please, I wrote here, don't throw your testimonies away. Ma- master testimonies here, no. Create a testimony diary where when you notice the act of God, buy that book as your message book. Some of you have diaries where you write your thoughts. On the 15th of September 1991, my daddy slapped me. Is there? On the 15th of November, my husband disappointed, bro- broke my heart by not giving me the money of the week he promised me. Is there? And you know, anytime you go through your, your diary of hearts, you get more hot. I don't know if you know that. You get more hot. Anytime you see it, you remember the wound becomes fresh. That is how it is if you have testimony diary. That you read it, the act becomes fresh. Ah. So set up that diary. Please, Osha, help, help, help. Set up that diary and treasure it. And you know why you should use a diary? Because no matter how sharp the brain of man is, it cannot keep record for long like what pen and paper will do. That's why you see that when David was to face Goliath, he was coming gallantly. Even Saul had forgotten what God did in the past. The other army officers had forgotten, but David was coming. Yesterday, I killed the lion. Hmm. 
The day before I killed the bear. Yes. Today, I can do all things. Through, through Christ that strengthens me. Everybody was asking, what made you think that you can defeat this Goliath? Yesterday, I killed the lion. He was hammering on what God did yesterday. And using it to challenge today. Beloved, that is what I believe made Elijah refuse to give up in, in his place of prayer. The Lord said, I'm summarizing. She not in Tolon, she no That's why at times when the devil comes around me to whisper the things that will make me doubt and fear in my heart, I resist it by coming back to mention the things that God did for me. If I mention my testimonies, and some of you will think that I'm the only one that God loves in this church. If I just begin to mention my testimonies one after the other. That's why I came up with one slogan. That's my statement. He has never for once allowed me, Pastor Prince Will, to be put to shame. I have tested him and I have seen that he has never for once allowed me, Pastor Prince Will, to be put to shame. Even when I don't understand what he's doing. By the time I get to the pastor, oh, this is why God did what he did. At every junction, he had never allowed me, Pastor Prince Will, to be put to shame. That's where I got my conclusion for, from when I look back. So when you look back, children of God, don't look back to your hearts. Look back to remember God's mighty hand that took you to this point. When you remember it, sir, your faith in God will remain active. Let me tell you one more testimony before I close. You know, when we were paying we paid for this place that time many years ago the agreement was one million naira, ten years so we had signed the agreement how much did we have on grand that time we had 390 cash so we took it to them they signed some things came up we really had to renegotiate to the same one million for eight years and they said we should come with what we have we came with what we have again now we now paid that money till it got to 800 we had as at the time it got to 800 000, we had emptied everywhere could see a county can come out to nikoja one thousand naira. would they take a post dated check And I'm a, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I know what it means if your check should bounce. They can sue you and you'll be jailed for it in Nigeria. I didn't have relationship with bankers to so say, okay, give me an overdraft, which means you can pay in upfront, then I'll be bound. I didn't have that relationship. So I was now thinking, should I call them to let them know that they shouldn't present the check? But you know what crossed my mind? I always believe in the law of first impression. <laughs> the first contract we are entering. Maybe some of you don't think like that. First impression, the white man says, last long. So I didn't want to do that. We started praying. Sir, two days to the day, I'm at hero. Whoa. Then we have one day to go. 
So I was saying, well, if the worst comes to the worst, by the end of today, I will call them to let them know that they shouldn't present the check tomorrow. At least they might even, if they want to return, let them return my 800,000. So I left church. By the time I returned, our assembly pastor that time said, sir, somebody just came now. I said, what happened? He said, the person came to pay a tithe in church. And I said, take it to the bank now. You know where we take it. He said, this one is different too. I said, different as in how? He said, sir, the person brought 200,000 naira. The exact amount. Hey, I looked up. I looked, you know, I was just looking around. You know what came to my mind? God, you are too much. I said to him, pastor, you know, he said, sir, go and pay it into the bank. So the following day, Nine AM Timothy Bab Tra Ah. Shall we put you Sony? They went to present their check before nine. You know, you know why I told why I remember this testimony. Day before yesterday, I was listening to Reverend George Adegoy of Raymond Chapel. He said, God told us to build a cathedral for him uh, about 20 years ago. And uh, we started the project. We started taking the project to a point. It got to a point. Money was finished. He said, so I called the committees. Building committee. Committee dissolved. There's no money. What do we do? They said, let's start praying. He said, so every day, they will go to the church building site. That project abandoned. They'll be praying. Lord, send help. Lord, send help. Lord. So one of the days, thank you. One of the days, they were still praying for Lord, send help. They said a car just parked and the man a man came came down and told them he wants to see the pastor he said one person came to call me sir somebody was, he said you see that we are praying tell him to wait they said the man said it's important he sees you and he can't wait so he said after much prayer he went to see the man the man said sir i was praying and god said i should give you this very light looking envelope so he collected the envelope and went back to the place of prayer. Let us pray. And we're praying, Lord, send. He said, the man that, one of the people said, sir, why not check the envelope? He said, don't distract me. We are praying for, check the envelope, sir. He opened it. He said, sir, men of God, you won't believe. I saw a check of 100 million naira 20 years ago. He said, prayer, stop. He said, then fear came in. Can it be real? Will they pay us? It was a company check. Tell your neighbor, God is real. So he said, he didn't sleep. He was just praying. Then he said, I will go myself. The second day, he went to the bank. He was just afraid. When they took the check, he paid it in. They said, sit down, sir. He said his heart was beating. Bah, bah. Then he came back. He said, sir, we just confirmed the check. And we were authorized to pay it into your church account. He said, till tomorrow, I don't know the man. The part I forgot. He said, as they opened the check, he told, I saw 100 million. He said, they should go and look for the man. He didn't find him. He had driven off. He said, the man said, God has been speaking to me since 21 days ago. Three weeks ago. Do you think God is dead? You give up in prayer when your faith dies. When your level of trust is low. And what makes your level of trust to be low is because you forgot the act of God in your life yesterday. But if you keep your level of trust in God in view, in front of you, that's why you see that some people, you'll be shocked. Some people's faith is high, some is low. It's not that God distributed faith and say, I give you 100% faith, I give you... No, 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 no. Listen. 
the more you the more you can treasure your testimonies the act of god in your life the higher your faith but if you forget the act of god your faith dies in front of a new challenge have you learned something today so go back now after today's service go sit down examine your life leave this guy leave this guy leave him let him enjoy himself go back take record write down those act of god times in your life that you thought it was over that god showed up then once a while always go back to it you will see that your faith in god will be strong if you are blessed rise up on your feet let's close Put your hands together for the Lord. Say, Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I say again, I believe in miracles. You didn't hear me. I say again, I believe in miracles. So I believe in miracles. They may fight against you. Don't be bothered. I believe in miracles. Fighting against me now, I'll move me more because I man fight against me not to man bully no by the grace of God. So when I say new fight, uh, <laughs> keep record. Let's begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. I begin to say, Lord, thank you for what you did yesterday in my life. If you can remember any of those things, begin to thank God for them. Thank God for those, those things you have you saw that God did in your life. Mention them. Mention them. Be specific. Ah, those days that nobody believed in you. But Jehovah came true for you. I give you, Lord, all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for blessing us with your word. We ask, oh God, that you help us. That your act in our lives will remain fresh in our minds. Every demonic spirit of forgetfulness that makes us forget your glorious acts. We rebuke them from our lives in Jesus' name. As we go into this new week in faith, Lord, we conquer nations in the name of Jesus. We do exploit again this week. All we lay our hands upon to do this week shall prosper. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? One, two, three, and let's go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. A confession, I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. 2024, my harvest time. 2024, my harvest time. 2024, my harvest time. September 2024. Harvest of good thing is my portion in Jesus' name. And amen. God bless you. Enjoy the week. Second service.